help students, whether they're international or domestic, in figuring out what they want to do with their life or career, um, and how to find a job that suits their skill and their abilities and their interests and that sort of stuff. We also do things like resume review, interview practice, cover letters, that kind of stuff. But the, the main role is really helping figure people figure out their path. So when you're trying to figure out your next program, here are some considerations that you might make when you're deciding whether or not you're going to take another program. So changing to a new career or field. So for example, if you've taken, if you've done IT for 10 years and you decided you want to go into something more business related and you want to maybe go back into HR, um, then typically you have to go and get some, some more training to help te teach you some knowledge in that field. Um, also fields like HR and many other fields have certifications that can help you get work more quickly and help you gain knowledge that's necessary to um, try and get work more easily. Uh, professional development is another reason. So let's say you're staying in your field, but you want to do some skill upgrading or some specialization. Courses at colleges and universities can often help you do that. Um, maybe you want to get a promotion. Maybe you want to work up to a management level, supervisory level, director level, VP level, etc. Um, so going back for education can often be a helpful factor when pursuing that kind of pathway. If you want to change your lifestyle, so maybe your salary is not enough and you want an increase in salary and maybe you want to stay in your field and move up for that reason, or maybe you want to switch fields that have better salaries in general, that could be a reason. Or maybe you just want to do it for personal development, job satisfaction or personal satisfaction and in learning and bettering yourself and gaining knowledge. Um, so if you're deciding to take another course for any reason mentioned earlier, it's a good idea to figure out what course is going to give you the knowledge that is actually going to help you get employed or help you reach the goal that you have. And if we're talking about labor market, if we're talking about being able to get hired or able to get that wage that you want or that role that you want, um, it really does require that you go and look at the actual facts, look at the statistics, look at what companies are really asking for in that field. A lot of the time I meet with students like on average six a day and um, at the time when people are trying to choose their next course, I can tell you right now about half of the people I meet with are choosing their course um, without doing any research. So they're hearing from friends that this is what you should take, but they're not going and looking at the factual information to back up their reason for taking that course in the first place. Um, and that to me is a big mistake because you're basically spending tens of thousands of dollars with, uh, you know, by word of mouth, trusting that somebody knows what they're talking about. It's much better if you go and look with your own eyes to see what employers are really asking for. So this is the kind of stuff that we can help you figure out how to do. Um, but to give you an example of what I'm talking about, if you want to go be a HR professional, like a human resources professional, they have a designation to allow you to enter that market, but you don't have to have that designation to work in that market. But if you do have the certification, it can open up doors. For example, if you go on and start looking at work for entry-level HR positions or higher than entry-level HR positions, it's really common for employers to ask for that designation. They might require it sometimes, they might not, but knowing what it is and how to obtain it is really important before you decide on your program because maybe the program you're taking might not help you achieve the goal that you actually want to reach. So you have to go look at postings, look at labor market information to figure that out. Another example might be if you want to be a project manager um, in business excellence or whatever, then they might ask in a job posting that you understand what Lean Six Sigma Green Greenbelt is and actually have that certification. So how do you do that? That's the kind of stuff you have to figure out. Does the employer want it? And if so, how do I obtain it? An IT administrator role might ask for specialized knowledge in virtualization and cloud computing. If you don't have that knowledge, you're not likely going to get hired for that job. So how do you obtain that knowledge and get it? So this is all about looking at postings and talking to people who are in the industry to figure out what the gaps are in your knowledge or skills so that you can determine what learning can help you fill those gaps so that you can get hired in those roles. These are tools that we'll commonly use to help people figure out these gaps in their knowledge. Career Cruising is a really good site in Canadian terms for any institution in Canada and any career that you might find in the world. So I can go and look up at a career in this website, see what it is that those people do, see what kind of skills they use every day, and see what kind of education is generally required. So that would be a first step. 
Um, there's lots of information in there. You can also do assessments in that page that can help you figure out what your interests are and help you find jobs that might match those interests, et cetera. Job bank would typically be the next step where I'm going to actually go and look at labor market information. Um, so I'm going to go look at job postings, wage statistics, um, different levels of jobs and how what what their availability is out there and i'm actually going to go one by one through postings with people and help them figure out how to use this system so you can look at okay in five years from now i want to be a manager in my role this is what manager positions are asking for so that you, you can help identify those gaps in your knowledge so that you can then go back and look for programs that will help you fill those gaps ontario labor market is another website that's specifically for um, Ontario type of labor market information. Um, you can use that site in the same way as Job Bank Canada. And then the last point there is informational interview. So that's when you go and reach out to people who are doing the work that you want to do and ask them questions about how they got to where they are, and what kind of skills and knowledge are most useful in finding work in this field, so you can help figure out how to reach that pathway yourself. So informational interview will typically be done through LinkedIn these days. If you don't have LinkedIn, come and see us and we can show you how to do it. Um, but even if you do have LinkedIn, how you approach people for this kind of thing is really important. There are subtle ways that you need to maybe understand how to use this site and how to contact people so that you don't get rejections for these types of requests as often. Um, so that's something we can help you with as well. So the next steps after you've done that research. So once you've kind of figured out what your goal is, you've looked at labor market information and figured out what you're missing. Um, next steps is to go and find programs or courses or some kind of learning that will help you fill those gaps. Um, so common ways to do that are through postgraduate certificates at colleges. It can also be through uh, undergraduate diplomas at colleges, depending on the skill level you have in the field and where you need to start. It could be higher level roles like master's degrees or PhDs at universities um, for, for the type of role that you're looking for too. It really depends on the situation. Um, but those are full-time op opportunities, but maybe you're already working. Maybe you're working full-time and you're on a post-graduation work permit and you need to figure out how you can do education on top of your work that you're already doing. So that would typically be done through things like continuing education, night courses, that kind of stuff, which are typically also offered at colleges and universities. Um, maybe you can do the training through associations. So we talked about HR, human resources before. There are associations um, and different uh, companies that offer the courses that can help you achieve those goals. And that can be true for many other fields as well. Um, sometimes there are short courses you can do through online learning platforms. So for example, let's say you're in IT and you need to do crash courses to kind of learn up on certain programming languages or other IT related stuff. There's websites like Khan Academy or Udemy or Coursera or LinkedIn Learning that can help you do uh, micro-credentialing and get you towards those goals in different ways as well. There are also designations. I've talked about that already through the training associations. Um, but then there's on the job training. So some employers will actually train you for gaps in your knowledge as well. So you got to figure out what is available to you there and what's going to be um, the right approach for you. So your other considerations when you're determining what courses you're, or, or pathways you're going to take are the time and costs of doing that program. Um, what kind of helpful outcomes will there be? Will it just be skill upgrading or will you get some kind of certification that's recognized by employers? Um, what are your long and short term goals? And will that course or that certification or that diploma or that grad certificate, will it meet those goals? Um, the cost and employers will it will employer fund it if you do it a certain way versus if you go uh, do micro credentialing are you paying for it on your own these are all considerations that you can use when determining which pathway is the best for you to reach that goal so this is our contact information we do one-on-one -on -one appointments you may have already met with us i'm not sure uh, many of you if not uh, we can talk about anything i mentioned in this meeting today but also interview practice resume building um, labor market research in general, education planning, all that kind of stuff related to getting work or changing your career or staying in your career and specialize, specializing, that kind of stuff. So um, we do one-on-one -on -one and we also do workshops. So please reach out to us if you'd like to meet with us.